Him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. How many are glad to be here on this Mother's Day this morning? Amen. Today has truly turned out to be a beautiful day. And let me say as a pastor of Bethlehem Prince Baptist Church, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are in the audience and those who's going to view us on Facebook later and those who are listening via conference call. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. I am excited today. We are indeed for a treat. My good friend, my sister is here with us on today to worship with us and also to bring the message. She is a dynamic speaker, so you guys are here for a treat. But whatever it is that you're going through on this morning, whatever that's on your heart, that's on your mind, or whatever it might be, turn it over to God this morning. Amen. And let God be the lift of your burdens. Amen. Let him make all things brand new in your life. And if you ask him for it, God is willing and able to give it. Amen. You just got to trust him with it. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So let us worship the Lord on this morning. Oh, I'm 
just that, Lord. You look upon us all. Yeah. Hold us in your arms. Yeah. Lord, keep us strong. Keep us healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And God, give us some things. Yeah. We just want in our heart. Lord, we ask that you look upon the one that you planted here. Yeah. Oh, God, keep him strong. Yeah. Yeah. And keep him focused on the Lord. Yeah. Lord, show him how to walk in and walk out among your people. Tell men, boys and girls and women about a dying world but a living Christ. Let him tell them when they are sick that God is there. Let him have the words to say when we are sad and afraid. Let him have the words, Lord, when we lose loved ones. Give him the words that let God himself hold in him. Then God, we all have loved ones, mother of God, I didn't know, Lord, I did not know what a gift that was until it's gone. Jesus. God, let me tell you something that I learned through life. Those who have mothers, love them, love them. Forgive me, forgive us of our sins. 
If I done anybody wrong, let me go to him and say, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I don't need some things I can straighten out on my record. I got enough to deal with. I don't need no one to be upset and I don't say I'm sorry. But then go. When I stand before this just and righteous God, Lord, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. I don't want to stand before God without the blood of Jesus Christ in front of me. Oh, Christ, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Then, God, then, God, let me see that city. Not just see it, let me enter. And let me go into that building not made by human man's hands. Let me take my appointed seat. Oh, we're going to sing and we're going to shout. Praise us to God, praise us to God. And I'll never be in it. All these things I ask so much. Humble is up. And thou, son Jesus, and thou, son Jesus, and thou, son Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen. And amen. No, that's right. scripture reading this morning will be coming from Psalms number 8. Right. Psalms 8. Let us stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Psalms 8 reads, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of, out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, ye have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the adversary. When I consider your heavens and the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man, that you, in, that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. That's right, brother. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. That's right. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. That's right. You have put all things under his feet. Mm -hmm. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the fields, mm -hmm. the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. I read the entirety of Psalms 8, the word of God for the people of God.
Good morning. Good morning. God is good. Good morning. All the time, God is good. What an awesome God that we serve. Thank God for all his gracious blessings. We do realize that it is nothing that we did of our own recognizance that allows us to be here today. Everyone agree? Amen. How awesome are the mothers of the world today? I mean, we got some extraordinary mothers. We got some mothers that's played both roles, mother and father. We got some mothers that's been grandmother, great-grandmother, mothers. We got some awesome people here in Bethlehem and our mothers in the church. This is a glorious day that God has placed before us, and we give him all the praise and glory. So when I think of mothers, I think of security. I think of nourishment. I think of longevity. I think of, I ain't got nothing to worry about. Come mama here. But I tell you, if I could elaborate on one thing, their mothers are most famous for that what made them so brilliant, what made them so resilient, what made them so awesome, it wasn't enough the fact that they bore children. But they took the time to pray. If you got a praying mother, if you had a praying mother, Continue to 
protect the universe that we live in. We thank you for being God and God all by yourself. This is my prayer and that's on Jesus' name that I pray for you. Amen. 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 And I do thank you, my Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to, where, where is, uh, come here, young man. I need you up here. Yes, you. Go back in the kitchen, and there's a deacon and another young man back there. I need you to help them do something. Just follow their cue, okay? Um, at this time, with the assistant of the pastor. We are about to give out the roses to the mothers. And we have a few special gifts that the pastor will take care of and Brother Ezel Williams. But there's something I want to say and I know y'all missed it. If you don't, something wrong. My little buttercup. Her knee is hurting her. She walked out in that graveyard to 2.30 yesterday. And if you saw her, she was hopping then. Yeah. And she's at home today because of that. And I don't want her to know because she's looking at this thing on that Facebook or whatever. I miss you, babe. See if the young men are ready because all they got to do is bring them up. Turn. This is from the church to you. Thank you. 
So what we have here, we have the red flock, the red roses, and we also have the white and some multicolor. Now, I need one representative per family for the white for the, those mothers who are deceased. So if you and your sibling have the same mother, just need one of you guys to represent your family to receive the white rose. So if you have a deceased mother, please stand. So if you see a pink or a multicolor one, they are short of white, so we have to use those as a substitute. So we have a few remaining, so if you want it, stand and the young man give it to you. <laughs> Amen. How many do you have? There's two. Come on, one more right here. Amen. One right there. There you go. There you go. All right. Amen. Thank y'all so very much. Now we have all the red roses for all mothers. All mothers. So all mothers give one to every mother.
Has everybody received the rose? Got a few extra. Anybody want extra rows? Right, right over here, dears. She wants to copy. Springtime Church. Amen. This morning, somebody may be burdened with an issue. Someone may be still more than the loss of a mother. Missing the presence, missing a warm cooked meal, just holding on to those precious memories. But whatever it is you may be going through, what you're dealing with, our God is able. He's able to comfort you. He's able to lift you up, and he's able to carry you through. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us stand, those who can. Father God, we thank you on this morning for being so good unto us. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your house one more time just to lift up your holy name. Somebody wish they could be here this morning, but they're not able. But God, you allowed us to walk in on our own strength, in our sound mind. Whether we walked in or what we will in, we're in the house and God, we just want to say thank you for being so good to us. Lord, you woke us this morning, started us on our way, God. You gave us food to eat and clothes to put on our backs. Yes. Didn't have to, Lord, but yet you did anyhow. Yes. And God, we thank you yes. for being so good. Yes. God, today is a special day for we honor all the mothers across this country and across this world, Father. Yes. The women who carried us in their womb, God, and yes. nursed us, right. who wiped our noses when we were sick, yes. who made sure we had a warm meal to eat. Right. And also make sure we had a place to sleep. God, we thank you for the unconditional love that a mother gives to her children. But what would this world be without a mother? Someone to comfort us when we're hurting. Someone to bind our wounds when we have injured ourselves. Someone just to tell us that they love us unconditionally. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for blessing us with mothers across this world. Someone who knows in the bottom of their heart, in the depths of their soul, when it's time to comfort and to nourish those who are hurting. There are women all across this world that didn't bear children on their own, but they have stepped in the gap of those who are without mothers who covered other people's children, who prayed for other people's children, who looked after them and kept them out of trouble. God, when mother couldn't do, there was a grandmother who was there to make sure that that child stayed in line. God, we thank you for having someone always to be in the gap. 
making sure that we're covered. That are always looking out for us. Even when we wasn't looking out for our own selves. God, I thank you for praying mothers. Who saw us going down the wrong path. Who tried to give us wisdom when we would not listen. But yet, God, they went down on their knees praying. Calling out our name before you. And God, you called us. And we heard your call. And we came back on this side. And we did not understand why they shouted and, and weep the way they did. But they knew that they was praying for our deliverance. And God, you answered their prayers. And God, we say thank you. God, you saw what we could not see for ourselves. That we had a mother that prayed for us. And for that, God, we say thank you. God, when we are away from home out on the other cross, across the other shore, on the battlefield, mothers were still praying for their sons, yeah. praying for their daughters. For those of us who felt like we was grown enough to do our own thing, go out on our own, a mother prayed for us yeah. that we'll find our way home. Right. And God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, God, I ask God that you just continue to cover our mothers, God. The ones who strive and pray for us. God, continue to be everything that they need, God. And since they have served us so diligently by taking care of us, God, it's our time to take care of them. To make sure they want for nothing, God. To make sure they have all that they need, God. God, that we're pouring that love back in them that they poured in us. God, we thank you. Thank you for having someone on this, on this earth, God, that cares enough for us yes. to look out for us. Yes. Right. There are a lot of people who didn't have mothers. Right. But I thank you for those women who was willing to step in yes. and willing to step out on faith right. to look out for someone else. Yes. God, we need you like we need one another. Yes. Right. God, we need your presence, we need your warmth, we need your love. God, bless everyone that is in this sanctuary, Father. You know all what we're standing in need of. You know all what we're going through. God, I'm crazy enough to know that you're able to meet every need in this house. Not only our needs, God, but the needs of our family and our loved ones and our friends. God, help us keep a firm word on our lips, God. Telling the world about a dead, buried, and risen, and a sinning Savior. That's still in the life changing business. Who is able to make our ups even up, go higher, and not down, make them turn around. That our God is able to plant our feet on a solid foundation that we will neither slip or stumble. But God, you're able to bring us through. God, let us continue to look out for those who are able to look out for themselves. God, there's somebody struggling. They got some things going on. They're unable to tell somebody what they're going through. But God, give us a heart to feel when somebody is in trouble. And then we're able to step in and help them in their time of need. Because God, we all need somebody. We all need somebody just to know that they care about us. It's not always about money, God. But it's about being present. Yes. That we know that there's somebody there that got, got us on their mind. Yes. That is always praying for us. Yes. God, I thank you. I thank you. God, I thank you for loving people and I thank you for this loving church, God. Yes. Continue to help us be an example, God. Because yes. we want to be Christ like. Yes. Not only in word, but God, and also in deed, in everything yes. that we do. Yes. Because, God, we are your ambassadors in this world. Right. Right. And when people see us, I want them to see the Jesus in us. Because, yes. right. God, we can do nothing without you. God, we still have people who are struggling this morning, God. We still have members that have lost loved ones. The last friend we had in this church was a loving mother, Father. God, I pray that you continue to put your hands around the center for family, God. Lord, wrap them in your loving arms. Give them yes. confidence and strength. Yes, All of those who have lost loving mothers, God. Yes. Lord, just embrace us. Because, yes. God, we need you. Yes. 
God, you are our everything. Yes. Yes. And God, we give you glory and praise. Yes. Now, God, we're going to continue to lift up your holy name, God, as we continue to do your will and your purpose that you have for us on this earth. Yes. Because one day, God, we want to see your face. Yes. And God, we just want to worship you face to face. Yes. God, you have given us all things, God. All you ask of us to do is to trust you, God. And this morning, Father, we're trusting you. Because, God, we know that you are God of your word. And that you never fail. God, we love you. And we thank you. It is in your son, Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Thank God. And amen. Amen.
I mean, she taught me how to do an outline and to do it flawlessly. She is like a walking staple. She has, you name it, she got it all off supplies. That's how organized she is. She has everything lined up and organized. She is a retired military person. She was in the Army. She served for years. And it, the drill sergeant comes out of her. <laughs> so she has served our country country village. She's been all over the world doing mission work and serving. And I'm just appreciative that she was willing to come and share the word of God with us on this morning. Amen. So without further ado, I'd like to bring up Elder Harriet Rand. And would you receive her with a hand clap, please? churches. So I do appreciate the hospitality. I do appreciate, you know, just a friendly hello. How are you? Um, the the uh, usher came. She saw me fanning. She gave me a, a fan. Just, you can't ask for anything better than that. I give honor to the illustrious Elder Damian Turner. He is a friend of mine. Of mine. Um, we used to teach a class together. We team taught at a previous church, so we have worked together for quite a while. I am honored to come and speak this morning, um, not just to the women, but just to the congregation as a whole, um, because the word is for everyone. And uh, even though it's Mother's Day, the word is for everyone. Um, but uh, I have to give honor to my God who gave me this calling that I accepted. Um, I, I bring you greetings from Redemptive Life Church in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, my pastor is Leon Willis. Um, he was gracious enough to give me permission to uh, come and speak this morning away from my own congregation, and I do thank him for that. Amen. I have a word for you today. Um, not, not a long word, because I'm not a long-winded preacher, but I hope it, uh, it gives an impact. And my thing is, I, I always hope that the word that the, that the Lord gives me reaches at least one person. Amen. And that way I know I've met my assignment. Amen. 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 Um, so let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for this congregation. We thank you just for being in your presence this morning, Lord God. God, I ask you just to decrease me as you increase in me. And Lord, just let me be your vessel today. Let me give a revelatory word to your, your people, Lord God. God, I ask your spirit just to hover and be right here with us as we give this word. It's in your name we pray, amen. Today, I want, uh, my, the topic of my sermon is reaping a harvest by sowing seeds in the spirit. Reaping a harvest by sowing seeds in the spirit. The first thing we need to know is exactly what is a seed. Because the seed is more than just a little thing you put in the ground and hope that a flower or hope that a vegetable or hope that wheat or something grows. Seeds are that from which anything springs, first principle, original, as in seeds of virtue or vice, principle of production. In the Bible, we need to understand about what sowing a seed is. Okay. Sowing is used as a metaphor for one's actions and reaping for the results of those actions. Okay. So we've always heard for every action, there's a reaction. Okay. So in the Bible, sowing, the reaction is reaping, amen? amen. So um, we're gonna do a couple of scriptures so we don't need to stand if you indulge me. The first scripture we're gonna go to is Mark chapter number four. Mark chapter number four. First of all, we need to understand what sowing is exactly. Mark chapter number four. I'm going to skip around, and there's three verses I'm going to pull out of this pericope that's most important. Verse three. Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. And as the story goes, we know the seed fell on thorn. We know the seed fell on rock. But in verse number eight, still other seeds fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop. 
Some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. We know that when it falls on thorns and when it falls on rocks, it's like falling on nothing. It's not productive. It doesn't do anything. But chapter verse number 14, the farmer sows the word. When we're sowing fruit, uh, when we're sowing, we're actually sowing fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In verse number 20, others like seeds sown on good ground hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Some 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown. So the main thing is this, when it's sown, it has to be sown on good soil. Right. On something that we know is going to be productive. Right. On something that's ordained by God. Amen? Amen. Turn with me to 2 Kings, and that's where we're going to part. 2 Kings chapter number 4. I needed for us to make sure we knew what sowing was. Amen. In 2 Kings chapter number 4, we're going to find an example of a woman whose seeds, her sown seeds, returned to her things that she didn't even ask for All right. and All more. Right. All right. 2 Kings chapter number 4. Verse 8. One day Elisha went to Shunem, and a well-to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. Right. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. Right. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room on the roof and put it in a bed and put in it a bed and a table, a chair and a lamp for him. Then he came, then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. Amen. Now, this is a Shunammite woman. We, if you've been in church three days, you've heard about the Shunammite woman. Amen. Amen. So, this woman, her husband, obviously they're well off. They own property. They own property big enough to where she could build him his own room. Right. She realized he's a man of God, and we know that you're supposed to take care of your man of God. Right. Amen. Amen. So she's like, you know what? I know he's a man of God. We're going to take care of him. And that way, anytime he travels through this way, we're going to put him up and make sure he's okay. She sowed the seed of generosity. She didn't have to do that. He wasn't the deacon or the preacher in her church. He was just a man of God that happened to travel by her way. So it's the first seed that she sowed was generosity. Being gracious. Yeah. Hospitality. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 So Elisha had a servant named Gehazi. He's like his armor bearer. And he's like, you know, um, hmm. She's what, what can we do for her? So in verse number 13, Elisha said to him, Tell her, you have gone to all this trouble for us. Now, what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She replied, I have a, a home among my own people, meaning I'm good. I don't need anything. I did this out of my heart. I don't, have, I don't, I don't need anything. I did this because I wanted to do it. The second seed that she showed that she sowed was humility. People that are humble, they don't ask for anything. They do out of their heart because they want to do. They A lot of them don't even want to be named. Right. Let me do it, be in the background. I'm good. Right. That's an humble person. Amen. Right. Amen. So he says, okay, well, this is what we're going to do. I know her husband is old, and they don't have any children. So he tells her in verse 16, about this time next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. The woman became pregnant, and the next year, about the same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. So obviously, Elisha leaves. He goes on about his business. So in verse 18, the child grew. And one day, he went out to his father, who was with the reapers. 
He said to my father, to his father, my head, my head. His father told the servant, carry him to his mother. See, mothers take care of everything. The preacher just prayed that. The mothers cover it all. Amen. After the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until knew that then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, please send me one of the servants and a donkey so I can go to the man of God quickly and return. He's like, well, why go to him today? It's not the new moon or the Sabbath. That's all right. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, lead on. Don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she sat out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. Let us break this down a little bit. As a mother, you know if you sat and had your child in your lap and your child had died, nine times out of ten, a mother's just going to be distraught. A mother's going to say, oh my goodness, what's going on? Not this one. This one said, you know what? I know what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to put my child up in the man of God's room. Because if we know if the man of God was in the room, the room has some anointing in it. Left over, some oil. So it's like, let me put him in there for safekeeping. My husband doesn't even know anything about this. This is a praying mother hand for our business right now. She gets a donkey. She still doesn't tell him. She takes one of the donkeys. She takes a servant. She leaves. The next seed that she sowed was faith. That takes some faith. You're going to lay your child, dead child, in the man of God's room. You're going to leave in search of the man of God. That's some faith right there because A, you don't know if you can find him, and B, you don't know what's going to happen if you do find him. Amen. So she goes. As the story goes on, she sees him in the distance. The armor bearer, Gehazi, runs up. What's going on? When he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant, Gehazi, look, there's the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Gehazi, this is, this is key. Gehazi met her. Everything's all right, she said. Come on now. See, this is what we need to understand. You can't tell everybody everything. Gehazi was not the man of God. Elisha was. Amen. Elisha had the anointing. Elisha was the one that walked for God on this earth as a prophet. Gehazi was just his servant. He was just the person to hold his Bible or, you know, uh, his, his clothes or whatever. Gehazi was not the man to tell the business to. A mother has discernment. A mother knows who's privy to the business of the family and who's not. You don't tell everybody your business because everybody can't handle what's going on in your life. Amen. Everybody's not cut out to handle what's going on. We don't know how the Hazel would have acted if she had said, my son is dead. Gehazi would have went, what do you want me to do? He's not a man of God. He's not anointed like that to do anything. The seed that she sowed in verses 21 and 25 was persistence. I'm going to get to this man of God if I don't do nothing else. Because my baby is at home. He's dead. And I got to do something about it. Mothers, we know when something's going down with our children, we're going to do whatever it is we need to do to make it happen. We may go without clothes. We may skip a meal. We may use the gas to go to the school when we really needed to go somewhere else. We're going to make it happen. It's about any means necessary. Attitude. And that's what she had. Persistence. In verse 26, she had self-control. Yes. She had self-control. Again, when games are game, what's going on? You good? You good? Everything's all right. Now, someone would have just went crazy. 
Oh my, oh, this is supposed to go, oh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. She's like, everything's fine. We're good. But this is what she did in verse 27. When she reached the man of God at the mountain, she took hold of his feet. Now the next posture, I mean the next seat that she showed was that posture. See, when things are going on, if you're a woman of God, you know what posture to get in. And you sow that seed of prayer. You sow that seed of worship. You sow, sow that seed of realizing who can really straighten out the situation. And Hazel was not the one. Elisha was the one. So the next seed she showed her son was posture. He's like, what's going on? He sent Gehazi back to the little boy. He had put your staff on his face. Okay, that didn't do anything. Gehazi runs back. Because see, Gehazi wasn't anointed. He wasn't anointed to do that, even though the man of God said, go. We know that everybody that's been commissioned to go doesn't have that power to do what needs to be done to handle the situation. Amen? So Elijah said, okay, fine. Verse 33, he went in, shut the door on the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. He gets to the house. He goes into his room, basically, shuts the door, starts praying. He turned it into a prayer closet. The next seed she, she sowed was patience. Now, you know good and well if somebody, something's going on, and somebody runs in your house and goes to a room, you want to be involved, you want to do something. Patience, she just, this whole time she's been patient. I'm going to wait and see what the man of God's going to do. I'm patient, I'm good. But she also sowed the seed of self-restraint. That's one of the fruits of the spirits. There's other words for self-restraint, but that's one of them. Let me hold back and see what happens. Let me just hold back, because I know God is able, because remember, my husband was old, and I had a baby, because the man of God said, this is what's gonna happen. The little boy alive, she goes in the room, verse 37, she came in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Again, she showed that seed of posture. Yeah. She saw what had happened. She knew how it had happened. So she's like, you know what? I got to get on my knees and bow down. Because I know who made it happen. Elijah was just the, the instrument. He was just the agent. But God made that little boy get back up. Amen. Turn with me to 2 Kings chapter number 8. We're gonna park there. Start the verse number one. Now Elisha had said to the woman whose son he had restored to life, "Go away with your family and stay for a while, whenever you, wherever you can, because the Lord has decreed a famine in the land that will last seven years." The woman proceeded to do as the man of God said. She and her family went away and stayed in the land of the Philistines seven years. At the end of seven years, she came back from the land of the Philistines and went to appeal to the king for her house and her land. Again, she sold that seed of patience. Because A, I don't want to leave my house and my land because I'm well off. I don't leave for what? But she followed the instructions of the man of God. And she leaves for seven years. So in seven years, what's happened to the property? What's happened to the land? It's dry. We know it didn't rain because nothing grew. They had a famine. So again, she sowed that seed of patience. In verse number four, the king was talking to Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, and said, tell me about all the great things Elisha has done. Just as Gehazi was telling the king how Elisha had restored the dead to life, the woman whose son Elisha had brought back to life came to appeal to the king for her house and her land. Gehazi said, this is the woman, my lord the king, 
and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. The king asked the woman about it, and she told him. Then he assigned an official to her case and said to him, Give back everything that belonged to her, including all the income from her land from the day she left the country until now. That meant seven years back pay. My point in all of this is saying, for all of those seeds that she sowed, the patience, the self-restraint, the humility, the being gracious, the faith, and all of that, at the end of the day, when it came time to go back home, she didn't go back empty handed. She didn't go back empty handed. So in return for all these things she done, prosperity. She had it when she started, she has it now, seven years later. In return for all her seeds, she got a seed. Because remember, she didn't have a son. But guess what? She got him twice because he died and came back. That's a powerful seed right there. All those seeds she, she sprinkled, that's powerful seed. You got a seed, lost a seed, and got it back. She got a house back. She got her land back. And again, she got back pay. You might think when you sow it's small. But this is what you need to understand. Each time you sow, God's counting every seed. He's looking for opportunities to send you your harvest. I call it the suddenness. And this has happened to me, and I've talked about this before to some other people. God showed me, I'm going to send you things suddenly when you least expect it. I was at my office one day. I'm an educator. I run a school. This lady shows up. Now, her child graduated three or four years ago. She shows up with breakfast, turkey sausage, eggs, pancakes, salt and pepper, syrup, everything. Laid it out. I don't even eat breakfast. Laid it out for me and my son. God told me I felt like you needed breakfast today. This is how I know it's a God thing. I don't eat beef or pork. The turkey she had was turkey sausage. God told me I do suddenlies. I do things that's unexpected. I do things for you because of what you've done, because of the seeds that you sow. If you're in line at Dunkin' Donuts, and so you get to the window and say, oh, well, one in front of you pay for your bill. That's a suddenly. You didn't expect that. You expect to pull out some money for some coffee and donuts. Amen. When you get to the ladies, we like to shop. When you get to the cashier at the department store, she whips out a coupon that you know anything about. Oh, hold on. It's 50% off today. And your bill's half of what you thought it should be. God works in suddenness. So every seed that you sow, He doesn't forget. When you sow your tears, you reap happiness. When you sow a monetary seed, you reap more than what you need. Shut up, my woman got that. When you sow your prayers over your children, you reap successful children. Now sometimes they, you know, they go about their own way, but they always come back. When you sow a smile, you reap joy. When you sow service, you reap blessings. So continue to sow. Continue to just throw out all that's in you, all the fruits of the Spirit. All that's in you to make someone else's life better. Yes. It could be a smile. If I had, had been having a really bad day, when I got out of my car and walked up to the parking lot, this gentleman immediately, how are you? It's a beautiful day. Yes. Happy Mother's Day. Now, I, mean, I was in good spirits because I knew I was coming to see my friend and share a word with you guys. But what if I hadn't been? What if I hadn't, you know, having a bad day, needed to come in here and get a word and get fed? 
That was a seed that he sowed. Amen. He'll be blessed for that seed. Amen. We don't know when. We don't know how. It doesn't matter. He's going to be blessed for that seed. Amen. So like I said at the beginning, this message was for the women today because it's your day. But men sow seeds too. They sow seeds too. So with that, I told you I wasn't going to be before you long. But with that, continue to sow your seeds. Great things happen. Things that you don't expect happen. I told my friend, I sow a seed whenever I can. If I go to a restaurant, they get a good tip. If I get my hair done, he gets a good tip. If there's an elderly lady coming in the door of a store, I open the door. If somebody, you know, needs a hug, give them a hug. Amen. I have students that don't have the support of a parent or, you know, some adult person. I step in. Amen. I have reaped more than I could ever even imagine. I told my husband, I said, babe, I said, the way we live our life does not match what we have on paper. And that's because we sow the seed. And God's giving it back and letting us reap a harvest that just blows the mind. So with that, I want to say thank you so much for receiving me. Mothers, happy Mother's Day. Auntie down the street that doesn't have any kids, happy Mother's Day because you're a mother too. The guidance counselor at school, happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. The librarian and the, and the lady in the cafeteria, happy Mother's Day. Because you have students and people, young people that look up to you where they don't have it at heart. So please be blessed, enjoy your day, and I thank you very much. Today. Yes, yes. Let me say for those that may not know Christ Jesus, you may feel like you may be on an island by yourself. You may feel like you're out of place. You might be that seed that fell on dry ground on rocky ground. But there is a place that where you can be planted. You can find good soil in Jesus Christ. You can be planted in him and you will reap a harvest of, of salvation that has no end. Jesus Christ can change your life in ways that you can even imagine for yourself. Blessings upon blessings. All through the night, all through the day. He'll keep sending blessings your way. Mother Fletcher sang this so well this morning. When you're planted in Jesus Christ, there's no end to the things that God can do for you and through you. Amen. I'm a living witness of the blessing of someone else speaking into my life, of someone else's prayers, a grandmother's prayers, a mother's prayers. I didn't say it myself, but it was their prayers that sent me toward Christ. And I'm standing here today to be a witness of the goodness of God and how he can make all things new. Because if he can change me, he can change anybody. Amen. 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 Would there be one this morning? You can come by level. You can come by Christian experience. Or you can come by as a candidate for baptism. By heaven, you come, you can come. Amen. You can be planted here. You can grow here. Amen. But the most important thing is that you get to know Christ. Amen. And be planted in him. Amen. And he will not steal you up. Because our God is able. Man, God bless.
again in our congregation. These are our announcements. Please give your children's information to Sister Atra Chisholm. Her email address is atrachisholm at gmail.com. The Indian Creek PB Association Developmental Fund Rally is the fifth Sunday of this month, May the 29th at 2.30 uh, at the Indian Creek Tabernacle. The guest speaker is Elder Dr. Mylon Burwell. The 152nd Annual Session of the Indian Creek PB Association will be Thursday through Sunday, and it's September 15th through the 18th, 2022, and it begins at 8 a.m. Bible class is every Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock p.m. on via conference call with Pastor Turner and Mother Allen. Sunday school and worship service will be heard on via conference call at 9 a.m. each Sunday morning. <coughs> also, the worship service will be heard later on Facebook, and that's Facebook, Bethlehem PB Church, Madison, Alabama. Also on YouTube, and it's Bethlehem PB Church, Greenbrier, Alabama. Please remember the sick and the shut-in. The names are Mother Elnora Holly. She has sinus infection and sore throat. Uh, Mother Esther Allen. Sister Candice Fletcher. Deacon Ezell Williams, he's here today. Brother Effie Rogers. Sister Gwen Ragland. Sister Angela Cartwright, she's here today. Amen. Sister Bernice Thatch. Sister Lily Bryce. Brother Mick Malone, he's here today. Amen. Brother Turner Rogers. Mother Ruth Kirby, Mother Viola Booker, Mother Maggie Vance, she's here today. Amen. Sister Minnie Lewis, Sister Annie Walton, Reverend David Steele, Sister Lucy Harris, she's here today. Amen. Brother Paris Kavnar, Sister Louise Cawthorn, she's here today. Amen. Sister Ella Pam, she's here today. Amen. Sister Martha Grizzard, Sister Deborah Walton. And if we have any guests with us today, if you'd like to stand, you may do so at this time. Tell us your church. If there are guests present, you do not wish to stand on behalf of, uh, go ahead. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for your warm welcome uh, and just being in the house of God today. Um, my name is um, Minister Vicki Robertson. I'm a dear friend of Elder Brand. And, uh, I bear witness to the words she preached and the seeds that she sowed. But I just wanted to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And thank you again for inviting me in and making me feel welcome. Amen. 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 Again, on behalf of the Bethlehem Happy Church family and Pastor Turner, we say welcome, welcome, welcome. And again, Happy Mother's Day. Amen. 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 Today, I want to acknowledge Sister Holly. Amen. Sister Holly has been keeping us informed. She has filled in the gap for Sunday School Secretary after the loss of Sister Smith. And I just want to let you know I appreciate you and I thank you so much for your Amen. hard work and dedication and for you know, giving the announcements. And sometimes I get to you last minute, but just being persistent in, in being here and being dedicated with your time and your effort. Amen. So I just want to give you a small token to show how much I appreciate you and I thank you for your service. Amen. This small token to our guest speakers, Elder Harry Rand. I want to thank her for sharing the word of God with us on this morning and for just being a good friend who's always been there for me if I needed her. And you being nice to people don't cost you a thing. And it'll come back to you in so many different ways. And I'm just so thankful to have someone like her in my life, to know her, to know hers. Minister Robinson out here, just good friends, good people. Amen. Good people, good conversation, just, just family. Amen. And I just, they're not strangers to me because once we got to know one another, it became family, like instantly. And I just want to also acknowledge 
every church mother here in Bethlehem, those who are present in the house and those who may be at home listening via conference call or maybe watching on YouTube or Facebook later, thank you for your service and for being in the gap for our young women and also for our young men, Amen. those who don't have a mother figure in their life, and you are there. Amen. You are mothers of the church to be that mother figure that we don't have, to, to keep us accountable. To let us know when we're wrong and, 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 and to love on us. Because there's nothing like having a mother. Amen. Amen. And I'm, I especially love because Mother Fletcher always called and check on me. Right. She's like, I was in the spirit, so she'll call and she'll check on me. So I appreciate, I appreciate little small things like that because it's good to know that somebody cares about you. Amen. You know, Amen. they're reaching out. Right. You know, we're supposed to reach out to one another, make sure our people are doing okay, to make sure they're being thought of. Amen. Because regardless of how much money you give somebody just to know that they're thought about, does so much for people. So let us continue to sow the seeds of love because we want to be more like Christ more than anything. We want to show those seeds because guess what? It's going to come back full circle. So show love, show hospitality, show generosity to people. Because guess what? God is going to hold us accountable for how we treat other people, not how they treat us. So we want to make sure we're on the right side of this by doing what God told us to do, by taking care of one another and looking out for each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's important how we address one another, how we talk to each other, Amen. because it matters. Amen. It matters. And ain't nothing wrong with saying I'm sorry when you hurt somebody's feet. It does not hurt. Because guess what? We all are trying to make it in. Because I ain't trying to make it in by myself. I want to see some more faces in them besides me. Amen? Amen. So let us do what we got to do to make each other better. Amen. Amen. With that being said, let us go on. Amen. Let us all stand. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, God. God, we thank you for this Mother's Day. God, we thank you for all that you have done and all that you want to continue to do. God, we know that you are a God that is capable of all things, able to do everything, God. God, we ask on this day, God, you just help us to be better each and every day. Help us to be better than we were yesterday and help us to be better tomorrow than we were today. Because, God, we're trying to be more like you. Because, God, in the end, we try to make it in. Yeah. And God, if we can't make it in on our own, God, but we need you leading and guiding us each and every step of the way, God. God, we want to be better in all that we do and all that we say. God, cover every family that is represented here. Cover our family and friends, God. Because God, when people see us, we want them to see the light of Christ that is in our hearts. And God, that we're being true examples of what you have called us to be. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Rest and rule and abide with us henceforth now and forever. May all God's children sing. Amen. Amen. Be blessed.